Good morning. My name is Professor Marius Ungerer. I'm from the University of Stellenbosch Business School. And um, I'm here at the We Read For You. And I'm going to talk about J.P. Landman's book, The Long View. In this book, J.P. is asking the question, should we have hope for the future? And he's answering that question in a definitive way. The book is trying to answer very specific questions for us as South Africans. Is South Africa going to make it? Are we going to become a shining example of a modern society? A proud member of the world's leading countries? And are we going to be okay? Or are we becoming a failed state? Now, those are very serious questions. Um, and, and J.P. Landman is then guiding us to not sort of just fall into the trap of looking at uh, the immediate. He's saying he goes beyond the here and the now to give us a solid, long-term, informed view on what he then calls the long view. It's structured in four parts, of which about two-thirds of the book is about part um, one. And part one is about then uh, what does a successful society look like? If the aspiration is a modern, successful society, uh, he's then sort of trying to sort of give perspectives on that. Uh, it would be people who had a good uh, standard of living. Even if you have a low income, you would have access to decent public services. The infrastructure would be good. There would be good education institutions like universities and schools. Uh, you would have uh, the safety of walking around and yes there would be something about art and culture um, in that um, society. But he's then saying that modernity is not so much a destination so it's not something that you read. Modernity in itself is an ongoing concept as soon as one has recorded some significant progress and it becomes clear then that there are new obstacles to overcome. What are the typical drivers for modernity? The economy and of course the ability of the economy to grow, demography and of course that the economic growth needs to exceed uh, the growth of um, the population. He's then saying there's two big obstacles in the case of South Africa on our journey of modernity and the one is the lack of social capital and the other one um, is equality and those two themes he comes back to that in um, different points um, in the book. For the vast majority of citizens, South Africa is definitely a better place now than 20 and 30 years ago. And he then sort of gives us um, reasons why that is. So the one reason is the end of um, sanctions and opening up, of course, trading opportunities that we've never seen um, in the country. Then also the uh, fundamental structural changes in the opening of the internal economy and of course then deregulation, a definite pattern of prudent fiscal and monetary um, policies and an, surprisingly an increase in productivity. To develop uh, you need to get the population growth below um, the economic growth and then the question is what happened in South Africa and we've got that uh, right. So what is the facts around um, the numbers in um, unemployment. We've created 4,3 million jobs in the 13 years between 1995 and 2008. And 2 million of these were created in the four years when the economic growth was 5% plus. So, so this mantra we need, I mean, that's what it's bringing. If there's high economic growth, there is high job um, um, creation. What are the things that we need to overcome if we want to have new jobs? A poor functioning labor market and the poverty inequality um, trap. He's stating that those are then um, obstacles uh, that we need to overcome and that growth on its own is not enough. Um, and of course, there's then these different debates going on, where does growth come from? And he's saying it comes from three views, the macroeconomic view, a labor market view, and a poverty inequality 
um, view. And it now sort of you would see it relates to those challenges. So what is the macroeconomic view? So how do we um, grow the economy? High growth and lower wages will lead to higher welfare, more employment, and more income for all, including uh, the poor. The labor market view is saying whatever the growth rate or business cycle phase, the complex malfunctioning of the labor market causes unemployment and inequality, and therefore you need other measures. And the poverty inequality view is saying whatever the growth rate or business cycle phase, the poor, the marginalized, the powerless, or the un or underemployed do not benefit much from the economy. And that's the sort of arguments that we hear um, all the time. And he's then saying that the National Planning Commission has addressed all of those three views. He's then also showing that, yes, there might be rising employment, but at the same time also rising unemployment. Why is that happening? Because people are coming to the labor market and it's due to urbanization, the inclusion of women as uh, productive economic um, actors in the economy, and of course, our youth um, dividend. We will have to find non-economic ways of dealing with these five million unemployed um, people. Many of the newcomers and currently unemployed will have to be absorbed in low-paid public works projects and community works uh, projects, which he then called it's a last to plus measures, but it is necessary for our um, development. Then he's um, moving on to an open society and how important um, uh, that is. An open society can change course more easily and move faster in a different direction as a closed society. So that's the reason why an open society is an important part of um, our long-term um, development. So he's saying many people find robust, noisy debate unnerving. A noisy democracy is a healthy um, democracy. If we want to create a better South Africa, we need to be part of the dialogue. We need to be part of creating this democracy. The society is not a collection of persons, but it is a network of relations. It is human indiv individuals, not human societies, that make the history. So we need creative personalities and individuals who provide the leadership, the vision and the energy to enable a society to transfigure itself. It's clear in, in his mind the National Development Plan is an instrument and a policy framework uh, that would get us to a long view. The critical issue is to what extent the state bureaucracy follows the national plan and make it the basis of its annual reports make it the basis for their budget allocations and make it the basis for their performance review. Even if only half of the na national plan is implemented over the next 10 years, the country will become a better place. But then inequality hammers away at modernity, so those obstacles, um, so, and he's saying the society's inequality and the lack of social um, capital that's hampering um, our ability for development. In South Africa, our levels of inequality are a source of discomfort and concern for many. It's not comparing us now to the very developed world, just comparing us to the, to the group that we're very proud of to be par part of, BRICS. And with uh, the Gini coefficient, uh, measures that um, inequality and we have the worst inequality um, may, uh, result of that group. Inequality undermines our safety and stability. Inequality undermines our growth and development and inequality undermines the society we would like to become. But then it comes to the, 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 the concept of social capital. And he's saying social capital is what binds you to other people. It is kept in your relationship with others. In a heterogeneous society like ours, building social capital has to be a conscious effort. Why? Because we're heterogeneous. We are different. It is clear in which quadrant every society would like to be in and which quadrant it would rather not uh, be in. Progress is about getting richer, but it is also about having more glue, 
more social capital. He's then also going into um, uh, the, the whole issue of um, corruption, uh, giving three reports on, um, on corruption and South Africa in comparison. In that, of course, again, he's saying that we cannot compare to the United States or um, UK. Or we need to compare ourselves to, to the BRICS countries. And Transparency International, World Economic Forum and the Heritage Foundation is using those as um, benchmarks for the measurements. And on all of those, contrary to popular belief, South Africa doesn't come last. In the 80s, we were getting poorer and we had weak social capital. On social capital, we haven't um, made the necessary move. And that, that's the unfinished business and that's the, the, the work uh, still to be done, to, that needs to be done. But he's then saying our biggest contribution that we can make is to avoid cynicism. Cynicism it destroys social capital and it distances ourselves from which we have in common. And he's then saying that is not helpful. In conclusion, then, uh, the result of this e examination is that in general, South Africa has what it takes to be a modern, successful society and the best way of achieving this is to follow the National Development Plan. The next three chapters much shorter, so um, he's then calling the second cha chapter the muddle through e um, economy. To appreciate South Africa's possible growth rate in the future, we must look back and see what has been achieved. So he gives us this um, table of the South African economy, the averages over different periods of time, where we are currently, and then of course what's been programmed into uh, the National Development Plan, and that's the 5%. And the 5% uh, growth rate is absolutely the aspiration that we need to go for, because uh, that would create the jobs. I think also very helpful giving us a balance sheet of South Africa and what would push South Africa uh, growth down and what would push the growth um, up and it gives us a long list um, of um, um, things there. So if we want a higher growth rate we must first change the balance sheet. There is a way to do this and that is to implement the National Development Plan. The extent to which we implement the plan will be the extent to which we change um, the balance sheet. Then the third chapter is about living with ambiguity modernity and our aspiration and development in de uh, to be a modern thriving state and at the same time being a developing country with um, uh, a lot of um, improvements that we need um, to make. The fourth part is about uh, having a bigger ambition and is actually asking us directly, do we have a big ambition for South Africa? Are we settling just for mediocrity? That's what he's asking us in, in this last um, chapter. There's a massive infrastructure development um, plans and it um, cuts across um, many um, sectors and um, institutions, but it is there. The industrial development policy action plan is also there and that is to promote industrialization of um, South Africa. He's then also again saying, well, growth requires the fulfillment of some intangible and some non-concrete conditions. And these things include things like confidence, trust, commitment and a sense of future. The message is clear. We must carry on. How confident are we about our ability to overcome the obstacles that we all know? And secondly, how confident are we in our own ability to engage in building social capital? So he's then ending off and his advice for all of us is, so next time you're standing around a braai or sitting around the dinner table and somebody starts honing on, I don't, I mean, that's like just unique words, about the latest drama, you don't need to go into a tailspin. Answer him with the facts. Then carry on making the most of your meal and of this country. Thank you.